About a year ago, I got lost on the internet and I found a video where if you take a glass test tube, pull it into a vacuum, seal it up, then put it near a Tesla coil, depending on what gas you have inside, it will fluoresce a different color. Instead of being a reasonable human being and just buying these things on the internet for about $10 a piece, I figured how hard could it be? Then decided to make my own. I'll skip past all of the failures and show you what worked best. With a single torch, it would take me about four minutes to get one of these glass test tubes to bend into this position. With two torches, it took me about 45 seconds per tube. Once I got the process down, now I just needed to repeat this another 50 to 75 times. Another lesson I had to learn the hard way is the glass ampules kept on breaking. As you can see here, with this glass ampule between two polarized pieces of film, you can see the stress crack there. In order to get rid of those internal stress fractures, I'm going to attempt to anneal the glass, which is bringing it up to about 477 degrees Celsius, then slowly bringing the temperature down, as opposed to shock cooling it just by leaving it out into the air. Getting my hands on a tank of pure oxygen, CO2 and nitrogen were super easy. The most difficult one I've had so far is nitrous oxide. None of the gas suppliers I would go to would sell it to me unless I was a dentist, a veterinarian, or a doctor. Irregardless of everyone telling me no, I was able to get my hands on a tank of food grade nitrous oxide, which worked perfectly for this project. Now the process for actually making these glass ampules. I would have them preheated to about 200 degrees, put it on the vacuum chamber, pull a vacuum on it about four to five different times, breaking the vacuum with whatever gas I'm trying to put in there, heat up the neck of the glass tube till it pulled in, then keep the torch on the tip of that nub until it turned into a nice little ball there so it did not have a pointy end. The first glass tubes that I made, I used pure oxygen, then I switched over to CO2, dry nitrogen, then finally nitrous oxide. Once I got the habit down, then I just repeated the process about another 40 times. As Bob Ross would say, this tube turned out to be a happy accident. I accidentally kept the torch on there a little bit too long, heated it up too much, and the neck super extended, but I was able to make it work perfectly. I'm slowly heating up the glass in different areas so I don't do any thermal shocking to it. Once everything's heated up properly, then I'm just going to keep the flame on the lower end of that neck there, get it heated up, and separate everything. There's a little piece of glass that will connect those two. Once I get that burned back, I figured, why not try to save this glass tube and see if I can get it to also fluoresce? This little tube actually turned out perfectly. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of it. I uh, set it down someplace I shouldn't have. Then the next day I set something else on top of it and broke it. The next gas I'm going to try is helium. This is where I got an education from my local gas supplier that the average tank of balloon grade helium is about 60 to 80% helium. The rest of it is nitrogen. As a result of not being pure helium, the gas came out to be more of a purplish and less of a pink orange, which helium should have come out to. This just means I need to get my hands on some industrial grade or some scientific grade helium. I'm still working on getting my hands on some pure helium. Unfortunately, every place I go wants to sell me a large tank of it, or I need to rent a tank for $20 a month. Even though this gas did not come out as the pretty pink orange glow that I hoped it would, since I already had the balloon made up, I made up as many amples as I could. The next thing that I'm using is not traditionally something you would think of as a gas, and it's where my real mad scientist took over. I decided to attempt to use acetone. I got the idea of using acetone from a project I did a couple years ago where I put some acetone in a copper tube, pulled all the air out of it, and then used it as a heat tube. With acetone being an excellent solvent, I wanted to pull as little of it through my vacuum pump as possible, so I heated up the bottom of the tube with the torch. This would do one of two things. The first thing it would do is it vaporize the acetone. By vaporizing the acetone, it would push all of the air and moisture out of the test tube so that when I did hook it up to the vacuum chamber, 
I only had to pull a little bit of the acetone through the vacuum chamber itself. Now at this point, I still have no clue if this is going to turn out, if it's going to fluoresce, or if it's just going to do absolutely nothing. Now is the moment of truth, and it does fluoresce a light blue color. I had no clue that this would work, and I'm fairly excited that it does. Since then, I've spent a couple hours on the internet, and I cannot find any other mention of anybody else doing this same experiment. Not saying I'm the first, but I was not able to find anybody else doing this. It does look like there were some contaminants or impurities in that previous acetone that I had. Went out to Walmart, grabbed a brand new bottle, then got back to the shop and made some more. On this particular one, I did leave some liquid acetone in the bottom, which did increase the vapor pressure of the tube, which did kind of change the arc inside of the tube itself. After figuring out that acetone vapors will fluoresce in a test tube like this, I figured I would try as many other random weird things as possible. The next one I'm going to be doing is butane, which was a little bit more difficult to finally get in the bottom of the tube. In order to accumulate liquid in the bottom of the tube, it had to cool everything off, which also then ran into problems when I then had to heat it up and melt the glass. It was really interesting watching the butane boil out at atmospheric pressures and at room temperature. Next thing I'm going to do is hook it up to the vacuum pump. And as soon as I close that downstream valve and it starts to pull into a vacuum, you can see that butane just immediately start to boil off. I was extremely concerned with thermal shock, which is why I heated up this glass extremely slowly before I pulled everything into a vacuum and sealed the ampule. With the first one being done, the only thing left to do is to repeat the process probably another five to six times. If anyone wants to guess what color it fluoresces, it's basically the same color as acetone, which is kind of a light blue. The next thing I had laying around the shop was goof off. I figured it's a decent solvent, it's a good cleaner. We're gonna try that. Not really sure what's all in goof off, so I go to the website, pull up the material safety and data sheet, and it turns out it's somewhere between 30 and 60% methyl acetate. The other 15 to 40% is acetone. With this information, I can't imagine it's going to be any worse in the vacuum pump than the acetone alone was, so we're going to do the same procedure that we did with the acetone. Get as much of it into the bottom of the tube as possible, heat it up with the torch, then boil it off and hook it up to the vacuum chamber. Once I'm done sealing it, shut off the lights, take it over the Tesla coil, and it looks exactly like butane and the acetone. Kind of a light, pretty blue flame. At this point, everything I've tried has worked so far, so next we're going to try some denatured alcohol. Load up the syringe, shoot it into the bottom of the test tube, then we're going to perform the same exact procedure as we did with all of the other liquids. Shake it up to get as much of that denatured alcohol into the vapor form, heat it up a little bit, then take the torch and seal off the tube. Since we will be leaving a little bit of liquid in the bottom of these tubes, I'm not going to be able to anneal the glass, so I'm going to have to make five or six and hopefully at least half of them turn out. The denatured alcohol doesn't boil nearly as much as the isobutane or the acetone does, but as soon as we hit it with a little bit of heat, it boils off no problem. It seals just like all of the other tubes did without any issues. And just like all of the other strange chemicals I did, it kind of comes out to a light blue flame. Here are the final results of all of the glasses that I made. This is nitrous oxide. Next, we're going to have butane. Then this is the air helium mix, which is probably the one that I'm most disappointed with. This next one is just straight air. 
The one I'm most surprised with is acetone. Here is pure oxygen. We've got another helium air mixture. It doesn't fluoresce right away, but as soon as I drop it on the Tesla coil, then it starts to react for whatever reason. Uthoff was also this pretty blue color. And denatured alcohol was also a very light blue. You would expect butane to burn while it's being electrified, but there's no oxygen in there and it's not at atmospheric pressure so it's unable to burn. In total, I was able to make 10 different types of test tubes here. Air, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, denatured alcohol, butane, helium air mixture, acetone, and finally goof off. And here's what they all look like under a little bit different lighting conditions. Here we've got goof off, Next is the denatured alcohol. After that, we have a helium air mixture. Next is nitrous oxide. Then we have butane. And finally, oxygen. I did try to go to one of the local gas suppliers here in town and ask them if they were able to order in a tank of neon. Unfortunately, they said it was going to be a 50 liter tank and it was going to run me over $500. So I'm still trying to find a smaller quantity of neon and other exotic gases such as krypton and xenon. If it takes me as long to do video two as it does to do video one, I will find those three gases, but it'll probably take me about 12 months. On this project, I probably created more waste than I did actually get successful test tubes. I would like to make a version two of this video. It'll probably take me about 12 months to get my hands on the neon. I'm not sure if I can get the Krypton or Xenon just simply based on price. But I would also like to try some other things such as methane, propane, gasoline, diesel, and then use a can of refrigerant from canned air, which is R152A. Let me know in the comments if there's any other gases you think I should try.